They are actually doing it. In the wake of the Supreme Court's recent decision to end race-based college admissions, schools are actually deciding to end legacy admissions programs as well. As of two days ago, Wesleyan University, which is a relatively competitive school, has decided to end their legacy admissions program completely, which was for many years giving preference to students who are predominantly white and wealthy. Now the thing is, only about 5% of Wesleyan's incoming class was actually legacy. So let's just think about it for a second. If you have a particular parent or parents who went to a school, who have good ties to a school, there is like an intrinsic likelihood that you might apply to that school as well. And 5% is just really not that big of a number in the scale of the number of people who apply. Especially when we compare it to schools like Harvard and Princeton, with nearly 15% of their incoming classes being legacy, it really starts to put things into perspective. I am a natural skeptic, so when I saw this news and I started to do my research, Research, there were a couple things that very quickly stood out to me. First, the biggest issue for colleges following this affirmative action case was the fact that not as many underrepresented minority students, so primarily black and Hispanic students, will apply to their schools. They don't have as much of an incentive to because of the rules, and some of them are scared that because these rules are no longer in place, the likelihood that they'll gain admission is decreased, and so they'd just rather not apply at all. This is a problem for universities. It'll affect things things like their admissions rates, the number of students who apply and thus the income generated for it, the amount of traffic that their usernames get all across the internet. There are a lot of different implications to this, and like I mentioned in my last video on this race-based admissions topic and everything else that's going on here, colleges are not just going to let it go. They want to come up with schemes that will maximize the number of students who they can retain, the next generations and years of kids who are going to be coming in and applying. And so they're going to devise schemes in order to try to maximize these numbers, we may be watching one of those schemes kind of unfold in front of our eyes here. Immediately following this decision, Wesleyan University got a ton of media hype, their name is all over the press, for a school of their stature, a reasonably selective school that now has their name all over the place. This is the best thing that can happen to them. This media hype is only going to drive the popularity of the school forward and kind of push them into the forefront. They want this to happen, it can only benefit them. Especially having happened around this time when college app season is opening up, it doesn't take a genius to put out a prediction where Wesleyan University will likely have a more competitive batch of students coming in and slightly lower acceptance rates this year. In some ways, this decision signifies to minority candidates, as well as all applicants to the school, that they are trying to level the playing field even in the wake of the race-based admissions decision. By no longer giving priority to particular privileged students, it now gives everyone a more fair shot of admission. Colleges want to promote more diversity on campus campus and they want more people of color to apply because it's a fantastic look for their school. But let's think about the flip side of this. The whole reason that legacy admissions even exists in the first place is because it's an effective way to siphon donations. Students who are alumni, who have strong family ties to a particular school, all of them are more likely to give donations over time. And for a lot of schools, those numbers can really add up. Why do you think Harvard is so desperately clinging on to legacy admissions? It's because they get millions of dollars from this. On top of that, statistically it is shown that when it comes to legacy admissions, families are more likely to donate more money around the time that either their kids or their grandkids are going to be applying to that school. Obviously it makes sense. Part of the reason for this donation is out of their goodwill, yes, but other parts of it are to try to increase the likelihood that their kids will get into these schools. The best way we can understand the implications of a decision like this is to take a look at a school that removed legacy admissions. So about two Two years ago, Amherst College, a very well-known liberal arts school, fantastic pre-med institution, actually removed legacy admissions altogether. It's something that they didn't believe in. Before the decision, around 11% of their incoming class was legacy students. Following it, that number dropped to just 6%. Literally half of those legacies who were coming in were basically not qualified to be candidates for the school. The way that it worked, like from an admission standpoint, this is just super interesting, is that all the legacy 
legacy students would have like a black flag that would show up on their application on the front page of it. So admissions officers immediately knew that they need to give, you know, a little extra priority to the candidate. Take a, a little closer look and see if there's something there that might be valuable to the school. <laughs> Boy. Now, even though Amherst has removed some of these legacy rules, the Amherst president is pretty firm in his belief that Amherst financially will not face any sort of super major impact because of this. But because it's only been two years since the decision, we don't know that for sure. And so a lot of schools are closely watching this. Just think about it for a second. If every president believed that the amount of money that they'd be getting wouldn't dramatically change by shifting their policies on legacy admissions, legacy admissions wouldn't really be justified altogether. So Amherst is a little bit special in this case, especially because they did it before any of this happened during like the COVID pandemic and such. So they had a different set of reasons for why they even made this decision. A lot of the predictions I made in my previous video about what the Supreme Court was doing have actually held up pretty well. So I wanted to do a little bit more speculation on what I think will happen going forward. It's highly likely that a good handful of moderately competitive schools, I'm talking things similar to Wesleyan, around 20%, uh, maybe a little bit higher than that as well, are likely to start dropping their legacy admissions practices. They just have so much to gain from it right now. It's such a hot topic. Their name will be all over the news. And just given as more schools are joining in this practice, right, they're dropping off legacy admissions, the pressure that it'll start to build on other universities to do the same will increase. So you might as well be one of the schools that drops this off earlier to consider yourself a forerunner and get a little bit more media attention and effectively be on the right side of history. However, I think it's much more likely that schools like Harvard, with way more legacy students and a lot more funding coming in, to just bide their time and wait to see how things turn out. They desperately want to see whether the financial statistics that come out of Amherst will be positive or negative, right? How much of an impact will it actually have? And then once they get all the data, they wait a little bit and they make sure things will go well, then we might see some slight changes in the way that their policies work. It looks like like legacy admissions as a policy will eventually be phased out, but it may not be as quickly or as clean as some news sources make it out to be. I appreciate you tuning in. Peace.